Hi, I'm Dustin Weiniger. I've got another Wild West video for you again with an old-fashioned firearm. I received this for Father's Day. Uh, it was a great surprise from my wife. This is the 1851 Colt Navy Revolver. Now, just as a disclaimer and to be completely honest, this one is actually not made by Colt, but it's a great replica made in Italy by Pieta. Uh, I've used Pieta firearms before. They work very, very well, and this is a very good... Uh, replica of what a Colt 1851 Navy was. It's even in 36 caliber, which is actually pretty hard to find. They're usually 44, which never actually existed in the 1800s. That's just something that's an afterthought today because people like the caliber. But back in the day, this was always 36 caliber, and that's what I received for Father's Day. If you're not familiar with the 1851 Navy, uh, it has been used by a lot of famous people. Probably the favorite pistol of Wild Bill Hickok. He famously carried two of them. His were plated with silver and had ivory grips, so a little more money than this. These Pieta remakes are actually very inexpensive, but the color you see here is actually the original color configuration with the brass back strap and the color case hardened frame. Anyway, I just wanted to get this out for a video and show it to all of you and, of course, shoot it. Not an expensive thing to purchase. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. Black powder is a lot of fun anyway. Uh, one thing I could point out too, I don't know how easy it is to see on camera, these have an interesting engraving on the cylinder. It's an engraving of a naval battle between Mexico and Texas. And this pistol, my understanding is, served sort of as a commemorative piece to the Texas Navy after that. Not named the Navy because it was issued to the Navy, but because it was named for the Texas Navy after that battle. Anyway, that's just an interesting little tidbit about it. But now that you've seen it and seen what a beautiful firearm it is, why don't we head out to the Utah West Desert and we'll see how it fires. All right, well, let's go ahead and get the revolver loaded. To do that, I'll pull the hammer to the half cock position, which frees up the cylinder. Then I'm going to put about 20 grains of black powder into each of those chambers. And to do that, I've got a black powder flask with a funnel that holds about 20 grains. So if I put my finger over it, release it, tip it upside down, shake some in there, close it, tip it back up, we've got about 20 grains, a little less because your skin pokes into it a little bit, but it'll work. And uh, I apologize if you're having a hard time seeing, I'm trying to do this on camera to the best of my ability. So that's about 20 grains of powder, roughly. Then I'll take the 36 caliber ball place that over the powder, and then I rotate that right down to the bottom, I'll pull down on my loading lever, and the rammer is going to press that ball down into the chamber. And I'm going to seat it down nice and firm all the way down. And you can, well, maybe you can see, that pulled off a little ring of lead. I'm not sure how we can see that on the palm of my hand, but that's what you want to see. That's how we know that the ball is seated down there very tight. Now I'm just going to go ahead and repeat that off camera for the sake of time until I've got five chambers loaded. Okay, I've got five chambers loaded. And the reason I load five instead of six is because even though it has six chambers, I wouldn't want to be carrying this pistol around with the hammer resting on a loaded chamber. Granted, this particular Pieta replica does have pins that will lock the hammer between chambers. That means I could safely carry with six, but for the sake of keeping myself in that good habit, I just always load five in any of my old-fashioned single-action revolvers. Well, now that we've got five chambers loaded with powder and ball, the next step is to add bullet lube. And the lube I'm going to use is this Thompson Center bore butter, the same stuff I use in black powder cartridges, if you've seen that video. And I'm just going to squirt a little bit of lube, try to do this where you can see it, down into that first chamber. It's been pretty hot out here today, so this is pretty soft stuff. And you can buy uh, harder lubes if you like, but for what we're doing today, I think this will be just fine. And then I've got just a plastic blade here, which I'll use to scrape the excess away. And that's what that looks like at this point. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish that off count camera and I'll see you when we're ready to shoot. Well now we've got five chambers with powder, ball, and lube. But I want to share one more thought about the lube. If you don't want to have to lube the fronts of the cylinders like this, the alternative 
is you could buy the pre-lubed Wonder Wads, which go on top of the powder and under the ball, and does skip that step, which would speed up your loading a little bit. But when it comes to guns like this, I happen to like doing things the old-fashioned way, so I don't mind using the lube uh, this way. Now I'm just going to add caps to the nipples, and we will be ready to fire. So the caps, these are Remington number 10. You can see that Remington number 10 percussion caps. And, whoops, I dropped that one. Let's try that again. You could use a capper to help you put these on, but I'll just go ahead and do it with my fingers. They just push right into place like that. And, of course, as you do this, you need to remember that you left one chamber empty. So make sure when you skip one cap that you're skipping the same chamber that you skipped before, for obvious reasons. That's three. Now the next one is my empty. Really recommend, while I'm doing this, I should mention, I definitely recommend purchasing one of these. I don't know why I didn't do it years sooner. Very inexpensive. Uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you, we paid $250 is all for this. So you don't have to break the bank. Not as expensive as a lot of revolvers are inexpensive and so much fun to shoot now i'm just going to rotate my cylinder so we can see where my empty one is if i pull my hammer back it's now going down on that empty chamber so this gun is ready to be cocked and fired so let's go ahead and step over and try it out Well, I'm sure you've seen by now that the 1851 Navy is a very low recoil pistol. But to show you how low the recoil is, I'll give you a side-by-side -side comparison between the 1851 Navy and the 1873 Single Action Army chambered in 45 Colt. Quite a difference. Well, I would say it performed pretty well. I fired about 30 rounds through it. Obviously, not all of that was on camera, but I never had a single hiccup. And also, I forgot to mention while I was out there, but you may have noticed when I shoot this that I usually tip it up when I cock the hammer, and there's an actual reason for that. Those percussion caps, when they fire, they tend to blow apart a little bit, as you'll see on the screen. And when they come apart like that, they become loose and sometimes fall off the nipple. And if the gun is horizontal, that will sometimes fall down into the action and jam it up to where it won't work. But by tipping it up when I pull the hammer back, if that cap does fall off, it'll just fall out onto the ground, sometimes with a little bit of a shake. But that's better than going into the mechanism. But other than that, uh, the gun performed flawlessly. And I don't know if you could hear the ring of the steel at the beginning, but it's always a good feeling with a new firearm when your first shot is a hit. I've always thought that's a pretty good omen. Anyway, as I said out there in the desert, I strongly recommend picking up one of these. I should have done it a long time ago. Great piece of history and just so much fun to shoot. And of course, if you liked this video, please don't forget to click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. That really does help my channel out a lot. And thanks again so much for watching. Goodbye.